Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is DJ Angelo. You're rocking with the best. The, the best. The best. The best. I'm the hottest round with the greatest style. What's going on people? It's DJ Angelo. This is Turntable Tutorial number 6. Last time we introduced the mixer into our scratching and I showed you how to do cutting. Today I'm going to show you another scratch technique that works well with cutting and these are called stabs. A stab is a classic scratch technique and as the name suggests it produces a sharp stabbing sound. Like cutting, stabs can be performed with either the channel fader or the cross fader. It's always good to be able to do both, but if you're a beginner, it's probably more beneficial to focus on the cross fader technique. So we'll look at this first. Before a stab, your record needs to be queued up to the start of the sound, and your cross fader needs to be closed. Once again, our mixer hand and our record hand are going to work together. The technique with your mixer hand is similar to the technique that we use for cutting in the sense that our fingers are going to open the crossfader and our thumb is going to close it again. The difference this time is that our thumb is going to stay against the crossfader knob at all times, gently pushing against it to keep it closed so that our fingers are only allowed to open the crossfader for a split second. Think of your thumb as a spring that immediately bounces the crossfader back to the closed position. So your thumb is always trying to keep the crossfader closed. For the split second that the crossfader is open, we're going to push our record forward in a fast motion to create a short, sharp and high pitched sound. Notice that when I'm stabbing, my hand stays on the record and my thumb stays against the crossfader at all times. The moment my fingers pop the crossfader open is the exact same time I push the record forward. This eliminates any other reverse part of the sound. You can of course experiment with the pitch of your stabs by pushing your record forward at different speeds but generally speaking stabs need to be done at high speed to create that high pitched sound. Stabbing with the channel fader takes a lot more effort than stabbing with the crossfader because of the distance between the open and closed position. So your mixer hand has to work a lot harder to create that quick split second opening. To achieve the speed required I use my pointer finger and thumb around the fader knob which is a technique I introduced in the last tutorial. Again my two hands are going to work together and will actually be moving up and down at exactly the same time. As I said before, stabbing with the channel fader is a lot of effort and really does require strong loose faders, so a scratch mixer is ideal for this. Stabs are a great technique to have in your scratch vocabulary, but they don't offer a great deal of variation on their own. But if we work them into other techniques, this can produce some interesting scratch patterns. Here's some examples.
Hey guys, I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Stabs can be quite tough to get the hang of, so practice and practice and practice some more and you will eventually get there. Remember you can contact me via my YouTube page or my page on djtutor.com. So until the next time, keep it up and I'll see you soon. Peace.